let's start. First of all, I should tell you, I'm a dog person. Now, you can either be a dog whoa, person whoa. or a cat person. Hey! But the important thing is, if you are a dog person, it means you're definitely not a cat person. I think it's vice versa. So that's why this story really resonates with me, because I am definitely a dog person. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you a story about a cat. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, and, believe it or not, a parrot. Okay? <laughs> now, the cat and the parrot, they were friends. And they decided that what they were going to do was really good friends, so they were going to invite each other out to a meal. So the cat would go around the parrot's house and have a meal, and the cat would go to the, uh, you know, vice versa, and have a nice meal, and that's how it would go on and on and on, and they'd stay friends. So first of all, it was the cat's turn to cook a dinner for the parrot. Now, this cat, he was a mean brute. He was lazy, he was selfish, his fur was all tattered, his whiskers were drooping, his ears had chunks out of them, his eyes were all watery and dripping. He wasn't a very nice cat. So you can imagine, when the parrot came round to have dinner at the cat's house, such a meagre feast you never did see. There was a dry piece of bread, some stale, stagnant water, and all there was to no chairs, just some cardboard boxes. But the parrot, he was a nice guy, he was very friendly and very polite, and despite the cat not being very nice, you know, he thought, well, my cat's my friend, so he didn't say anything, he went round and he had the meal, but really, he didn't have a very nice time, and went home thinking, well, well that wasn't a very good night, was it? But never mind, you know, he's a good friend, so... It soon came that it was time for the cat to go round to the parrot's house to have his meal. And this parrot, I said, he was a really nice guy, so you can imagine the most wondrous feast you ever did see. There were silver platters of wonderful dishes, there were smoked hams and smoked cheeses, a big jug of wine, and to top it all off for a pudding, the parrot had baked 500 cakes. And being so selfless, he gave 498 of these cakes to the cat. And just two for himself. Oh, wow. I know. So, when the cat came round, well, he looked at the hams, he looked at the cheeses, took his paws and gobbled them all up in one go, and he drank the big jug of wine, and then one by one he scoffed down 498 cakes. And he sat back, and he slurped, and he burped. And he said, well, that was all right, but I'm still hungry. And the parrot, being so polite and kind, but he said, well, I, I suppose you could have my cakes if you're, if you're really still hungry. And quick as a flash, the cat gobbled him down, and he slurped, and he burped. Now, the cat was quite full, but he was so greedy, he lay back, and his belly was quite big now, and he said, well, I'm still hungry. And he looked at the parrot, and the parrot's now, you know, it's a nice parrot, but by now he's getting pretty angry. He says, well, I've just made this fantastic <coughs> dinner, you haven't said thank you, you've eaten it all in one go, you've eaten my cakes too. Oh, you selfish cat, I mean, the only thing left to eat here is... <laughs> <laughs> me. And the cat, he looked down at the parrot, he took his paw up, he took his five claws, and he reached down and he grabbed that parrot and he shoved him down his mouth and gobbled him up and he slurped and he... Yes. That's right. Well, that was the end of the parrot. But whilst this was going on, a little old lady, she'd been watching and she was horrified, as you can imagine. And she strolled over to this cat and she said, You horrible cat! I've just seen you eat all your parrot's food and then you gobbled him up. What a horrible cat you are! <laughs> wow! This cat, he was so arrogant and so full of himself, he said, Who are you, old lady? Who am I to care what an old lady thinks? I've just eaten a parrot, 500 cakes, smoked ham, smoked cheeses, and a jug of wine. What do I care of old ladies? And with that, he reached out, he picked up the old lady, <laughs> he swallowed the whole and he slurped, and he... Yes. Absolutely. Well... As you can imagine, he's got an old lady and all sorts of things in him, so he's getting pretty big, this cat. His stomach is getting quite wide. But he makes his way down the street, and soon he comes to a peddler with a donkey. 
Now the cat's going this way, and the peddler's going that way, and they're going to crash into each other. And the peddler's quite a nice guy, so he says, well, oh, watch out, that little cat. Make sure my donkey doesn't step on you. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. But this cat, well, he's so full of himself now. And he says, oh, donkey? What do I care, a donkey? I've just eaten an old lady, a parrot, 500 cakes, smoked ham, smoked cheeses, and a jug of wine. What do I care of a donkey? And with that, he reached down, he opened his mouth, and he gobbled the donkey up all in one go, and he slurped, and he... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the peddler was horrified, and he shut up, terrified. And the cat made his way down the road, and now he's getting really fat, and his belly was bouncing on the cobbles as he walked, and his legs, and he got down. And soon he came to a king and a queen. Now, this king was the happiest day of his life. He was a happy man. But he had finally married the love of his life, a beautiful princess. She had long blonde hair, sparkling green eyes. She was wearing a silver tiara and the most beautiful wedding dress you've ever seen. And the whole town was celebrating the king's wedding. There was a marching band playing lots of music, really happy occasion. There was a whole herd of elephants in two striding along with red and gold coats on, as very royal elephants. And all the townspeople had come to celebrate, all gathering around, cheering. Mothers were picking their children up to see what was going on. It was a really happy occasion. And the king, being so happy and being so joyous, when he saw this small cat, he very kindly went down and said, Oh, careful, that little cat. Watch out. Make sure my elephants don't tread on you. I'd hate for you to get hurt. <laughs> well, this cat, he was so full of himself and so arrogant that he looked up at this king, just a little cat, well, a very flat cat by now, but, and he said, Phew, who am I to care of kings? I don't care about you. I've just eaten a donkey, an old lady, a parrot, 500 cakes, smoked ham, smoked cheeses, and... A jug of wine! Absolutely. And with that, he reached out, and he gobbled up the king, the queen, the marching band, the herd of elephants, and all the townspeople all in one go. And what did he do? Slash! Absolutely. Now, by now, as you can imagine, when this cat started, he was sort of a quite a slim, sort of mean machine. But by now, he was huge. His belly was stretched out here, and he waddled down the road. And eventually, he came to the edge of the town, and he reached the harbour where the sea was. And when he got to the pier, just in front of him, just down there, was a little crab. And he said, being so arrogant, because he was the king and there was no one left in the town, a cat was the only person left in the whole town, he'd eaten everybody. So he said, out my way, you silly little crab. Can't you see I'm trying to walk here? Get out of my way. <coughs> well, the crab thought this was very rude. And he said, no, no, I, I won't get out your way. I have every much right here, as you do, to walk along this pier. I won't get out your way. Well, the cat had just eaten the whole town. It was a little crab to him. And he was so full. There was the crab. So he let down and opened his jaw. Oh, and he scooped up the crab and swallowed him whole. And that he did. Now, when the crab landed in the cat's stomach, first of all, he was quite frightened. It was all dark and dingy. There were strange noises. Things were dripping from the ceiling all over his shoulders. And oh, my that like this. But soon he sort of came accustomed to the dark and looked around and suddenly realised that the cat's stomach was full of people. <laughs> there was the king and the queen, the queen had passed out, and she was oh, and the king was trying to come to her. There was the herd of elephants still trying to get in pairs and march along. That wasn't really working out, there wasn't a lot of room. There was the marching band, the whole town's people, mothers trying to comfort crying children. And there, in the very corner, looking very sorry for himself, his feathers all dishevelled, was the parrot. Now, don't worry, the crowd <laughs> said to everybody, he said to everyone, everybody, stay calm, stay calm, I'll soon have you out of here. Back away, back away. And he took his claws, one here and one there, and he went to the crab's stomach. And he went, skip, 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 and everybody came flying out, the marching band, the herd of elephants, the king, the queen, the donkey, the old lady, the parrot, 500 cakes, <laughs> smoked ham, smoked cheese, and... The Absolutely. Well, as 
as you can imagine, everyone was very relieved to be out of that cat. And so with the parrot, they weren't friends anymore. They never spoke to each other ever again. But do you know that cat had stretched himself so wide that one end of his stomach was here, and the other end was over here, and he had a big split all the way down. And it took him 40 days and 40 nights to sew himself back up together. And I'll tell you now, he was very careful what he ate in the future. Okay. <laughs>